All right, I did it. I uh, made it through Oppenheimer, and I say that in a good way. I was expecting to love this movie, and it created a new type of feeling, uh, a new theater experience for me. It's really funny, like, how Nolan works, man. He's hyping you up, telling everybody to go see this in IMAX, but, like, it's it's not about the spectacle at all here. Um, and Nolan fans, like, I love a lot of the action side of Nolan with Tenet um, and Inception and The Dark Knight. And I, off the bat, I don't think this is my favorite Nolan movie, um, but it is what I was wanting. Like, I really love the tone he captured with this, the existential, existential dread. Um, yeah, it was great. And Killian, man, Killian Murphy, I've told people for years how good of an actor he is and now it's right there on the screen if you're there you can't deny it uh, this is a different type of performance he's on a different plane of existence than everybody else here like what he was doing and going through in these scenes is incredible and he's not really like stretching a lot of emotions verbally but internally it's a very subdued internal performance and there's no way you can turn your nose up or ignore the greatness here and deny him of his crown. I mean, this is Oscar worthy. It'll be hard for anything to, to pass over him right now. He is laps, of he laps ahead of everybody uh, on the acting spectrum right now. And I, I've thought that since Peaky Blinders. And it's a similar type of character, but Thomas Shelby's a lot more loud and has a lot more he just he keeps things bottled in he's a mastermind but yeah often I really love the frail nature to this character and, and it was really the best way to sympathize with him because Nolan doesn't craft this story to make you cry or um to make like you, the, the the history about it like you definitely got to hear him out and understand what actually was going on yeah, I've walked away from the theater. I'm this Bath and Body Works. Or, no, that's a nail salon. Whoops. Yeah, I couldn't get any damn service beside the theater. But came down here to see this in IMAX, and it was worth the drive. Some of those sounds um, were incredible. But yeah, I'm just not going to be able to get in Killian's head, his face, out of my head, out of my mind. And that was the goal. I was wanting that, and I'm just proud of my favorite actor right now. Downey Jr. is incredible, too. But I did find... Like, if I had to make some complaints, the courtroom stuff was interesting, but the crescendo to it all was just, like, the fact that they scatter it throughout the movie so much. Uh, I'm not going to get into spoilers. I just thought it definitely felt a little uh, fizzled out by the big ending to Downey's side of the story. But Emily Blunt, her, she gets her moment. Um, Florence Pugh really rocks. Uh the way they scattered her into the story. There was a lot of great, Dane DeHaan, I really wanted more of him, but he gets some good moments. Um, fucking Benny Safty. that was one of the best ones that I was not expecting to grab onto. But yeah, I think the movie's like phenomenal. It's a showstopper of a film, but it's not for everybody. It's not for the mass audiences at all. It's a, it's a deep dive into a psyche that Nolan's never really done before. So, yeah, I, I, I like that though. I'm just wondering how it'll affect the population. And I, it, it really like, it got an applause at the end. It, the message is really good. And it's something that you can predict. You can kind of just know what the message is if you know the story of this man. But uh, the lines when they deliver them, they really hit. Uh, Killian was just owning every second. The detonation scene was incredible. I loved how they handled all that. I can see some people wanting more. Oh, I want some fucking explosion in action. The fucking movie is not an action movie. It's a hard R. It's not a hard rated R movie, but it's definitely rated R. And it should be. I respect Nolan for making it rated R. It's not. There's a little bit of nudity, a few F-bombs. But the, the rated R aspect is because of what the story is, what it entails to the future. And the way they capture that 
it's it's really brilliant and this should be rated r in any reality when you're telling something this morbid and uh yeah i really liked it i really re i loved it i loved it uh i'm not ready to give a rating yet just out of personal feelings i this is my favorite director of all time and yeah i need to marinate with this movie uh, some of my few complaints uh, there's a little bit i would cut out but I don't know if it's rewatch as rewatchable as most Nolan movies. It puts you in a mood for sure. But like I said, there's I love that it was three hours, but there's some stuff maybe on the downy side that I would have trimmed. Um, and some of the older Oppenheimer stuff just didn't grab me as much. But I think on rewatches, I will like that stuff more because Killian's doing some brilliant shit in those scenes. And um, yeah, it's it was just a fucking god smack of a movie man they don't you just don't you it's never what gonna be what you expect until you until you're like halfway through the movie then you're like oh okay um but some of my, one of my biggest complaints that i don't know if it's just my theater is the sound they're they definitely no one's worked on his, his, raising the volume of the dialogue to be uh to be able to like you so you can interpret it during the action and the music over compassing everything and some of the dialogue you could tell was placed in there in a sloppy way i feel like when killian when oppenheimer would be talking and there would be a in certain rooms or scenes and there's music and sound effects going on around them i could hear like a almost like background noise in his dialogue like it was weird it was weird and i don't know if that was just the theater or what even in the scene at the end when he's in a room like when he would talk i would hear almost a buzzing noise behind his dialogue and then when another character would talk it wouldn't sound like that so i don't know if they just had a bad time doing the adr or something but that would be my biggest complaint because it happened periodically through the movie and i and i didn't mind that in tenet or dunkirk but here i definitely was starting to notice it but that's the, like I said, it's the first time I've seen a Nolan movie in IMAX, so that might be why it was so clear, because you can hear every fucking little bug walking on the pavement in this movie. The sound is really good, but like I said, sometimes the mix is a little weird to me, but I'm, I'm excited to watch it in another theater, a uh, lesser theater, and at home when it comes out on 4K. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to report I really enjoyed the movie. I didn't, like, it's hard to say enjoying, because it leaves you fucked up it really wrecks you but it's a, i'm proud of cinema i'm proud of nolan i'm proud of these creators this whole team uh he's crafted the all-stars of hollywood i mean uh with hoyt with the cinematography and ludwig with the score and this cast he's really polished it through his years of filmmaking polished out the best roster of a film filmmaking crew and uh yeah you're watching these people make a bomb but the real star of this movie is thinking of these people making this movie like like it's almost like a parallel you know like they're they created something great in time with this movie but it's touch touching on a different part of time where they created something really wrong and uh yeah it's it's everything you're expecting but not what you're expecting uh it's the best way i can end this and i'm not ready to get my rating i'll get a nolan ranking out there soon uh ranking all my nolan films and i, I if you've made it, this is eight minutes, and this is like the longest out of theater reaction, but this is a huge deal for me. This is like a holiday uh, for movies. Um, I'm going to see Barbie tomorrow, maybe. I, I was thinking about doing a double feature, but if you start with Oppenheimer, you're not going to want to see anything after. Like, I don't think you will. It's It'd be nice to cleanse your palate, but like, you really, this movie requires you to focus and sit and think. Um and that's a superpower out of a filmmaker to do that. It's not easy, but I think Nolan does it every time. And yeah, he's at full stride here. Everybody on board, like I said, this is the all-stars of, of uh, cinema right here, what they created. They're just all in their, in their bag, as the kids say it. So yeah, that'll do it uh, here from the Jay Shray Way out of theater reaction for Oppenheimer in IMAX. Thanks guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time.